All right, so we're going to go. I can make these comments. Just so you know, my name is Hal Goldsmith. I'm an assistant United States attorney here in the Eastern District of Missouri. I serve as the senior, the senior litigation counsel. Uh, we have some brief comments. The indictment today that was unsealed, the grand jury's indictment that was unsealed today, uh, is the result of a year-long undercover investigation. It was conducted by the United States Attorney's Office, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Postal Inspection Service, um, with the assistance of the Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigations. Um, the investigation, the undercover investigation, involved the cooperation of any number of witnesses and concerned citizens. It involved court-ordered search warrants, court-ordered pen orders. Um, it involved uh, any number of, actually the review of thousands of emails, the thousands of text messages um, that resulted ultimately in the charges today. Uh, the investigation is ongoing, uh, so my comments today uh, can't be extensive. In, in addition, of course, now there's a criminal case pending here in the district court. Um, I would also add that um, during 2018, the investigation was conducted in such a way as to not impact, adversely impact, or have any impact, if you will, on the 2018, the August 7th primary election for county executive, as well as the November general election for county executive, as is the policy pursuant to the Department of Justice. Um, again, because the investigation is ongoing, because these criminal charges are pending, um, those are our brief comments. I'd be glad to answer any questions if I can. In the indictment, so, there was mention of a trustees program. Is there any other investigations going on? Are you further investigating other trustees? There's an ongoing investigation, ongoing federal criminal investigation. Any of the other people are named in this indictment, do they face charges? There is an ongoing criminal investigation, and there is always the possibility that additional individuals or entities could be charged. Some people were named and some were not in that indictment. Some get initials, some get company one. What's, how, do, how do you determine who yeah, I really, named and who? I really can't comment on that. Can you confirm that you talked with former or current county employees or if, some, if one of Stanger's aides wore a liar to get some of this dialogue? Yeah, I am not going to confirm the source of any of the text messages or, or recorded meetings or recorded phone calls. Again, there were search warrants, there were phone orders, and there were cooperating individuals. How would you describe this in layman's terms in terms of all that you were able to get? What? How would you describe these actions as that we've seen so far in this indictment? The actions by the defendant? Yes. Um, the, I think the indictment speaks for itself. It's a 44-page indictment regarding the five schemes that are set forth here. Um, I really don't think I should have any further comment on what's contained within the indictment. How quickly do you want this to happen? Are you pushing to get this done any quicker than normal? We're in any public corruption matter, particularly one that involves, um, that went to the highest levels of St. Louis County government, uh, we, we run at these investigations, and we're working very hard along with the FBI, the Postal Inspection Service, um, to do this, conduct this investigation in an appropriate way and reach a conclusion. Can you explain the charges? Why mail fraud specifically within the law? Well, mail fraud is just is, is the jurisdictional issue. It's, it's really honest services fraud. It, the charges are basically that the defendant deprived the citizens of St. Louis County of their right to his honest services, um, and there were mailings used. Um, in, it was a bribe, it was a pay-to-play scheme, obviously, that involved bribes paid through political donations in exchange for his official acts in, uh, in awarding and directing others to award contracts, either through St. Louis County or through the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership and the Port Authority. What kind of message do you think yeah. that this indictment sends out to other lawmakers who may allegedly engage in this type of activity? Well, we always look for our investigations and our prosecutions to have a deterrent effect. How much of the requested documents have you yet to even receive or go through? I can't comment on that. Have you gotten them all yet? I can't comment on that. Can you speak to the office's priority on investigating and uh, prosecuting public corruption? Uh, one of the Department of Justice's top priorities is investigating public corruption, particularly of elected officials such as the defendant, Stephen Stenger. As major corruption cases go, how good is this one? Do you have a lot of good evidence? I mean, how would you characterize your chances? It's a 44-page indictment. Uh, you can read the indictment. Did, no, what did, I want to mean is that Stanger seemed less than broken, like he's got a fighting chance. What, how do you read your chances of proving your case? Uh, we're confident in our, in our case. We're confident in our case, Kevin. Did, did you all play any role in his resignation? Uh, he resigned this morning, and we understand that he'll be surrendering his Missouri law license in the near future. Did you play any role in that? I can't comment on that. Is there, there's no deal or anything cut for him to resign? He resigned earlier this morning. 
you been in discussion with the defendant and Scott Rosenblum about some sort of plea deal? I can't really comment on that. Do you know his bond amount? He received a personal recognizance bond, so there's no amount. He's just a, it's his personal promise to appear at the court proceedings. Is that standard for public officials? or? Uh, it's standard for a, an individual such as uh, this defendant who has no prior convictions and, and there's no suggestion that he would continue to commit danger to the community or risk of flight. Do you anticipate he will be indicted on any other counts? I can't comment on that. It's an ongoing investigation. You mentioned that about not, I, I, I may want to make sure I heard you right. Was it part of your policy not to like drop this indictment during an election campaign because that's some sort of U.S. It's Department, of, Department of Justice policy is not to have any adverse impact on any election. In this investigation, uh, this investigation began in early 2018. Uh, it, it went well through the year, obviously, and that included through the August primary and the November general election. So we had to take steps uh, pursuant to our policy to avoid any adverse impact on the elections while continuing the investigation. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, How long do I have?